Hi guys, I'm Greg Hallett, and I want to take a moment today from behind my computer using Camtasia without putting myself on video. Just talk through a song, an idea here with you. Uh, I want to give you the process that I use for recording big orchestrations. And this is the same process that I've used pretty much at the beginning with a few little uh, changes over the years as technology has come along. Um, but the process really hasn't changed too much. Now the first thing that I do when I'm going to do a big arrangement is I basically come up with the idea, the form, the big picture, uh, the theme, and so on. And you can sort of see that reflected up here in this top bar. Uh, prologue, verse 1, it says piano only, verse 1 back, that's the last, that's, tech, that's some terminology I use, it means the second eight bars of the song. Um, this is an interlude, verse 2, verse 2 back, bridge, verse 3, deceptive means deceptive cadence, and then outtake, and so on. They're, um, the big picture is what we're talking about. So I'm not looking at a lot of uh, very intricate design necessarily at this stage. I want the big picture of the song, and I am going to go through and create a chart, a chord chart, of all the harmony for all that. Now at this stage I pretty much know how many bars are going to be in the song and I know how much uh, or what harmony is going to be really on each bar. And uh, so that's the big picture. And then with that chord chart, the other thing that I want to provide to the orchestrator, which in this case is Ben Bodkin, is I'm going to give him a rough um, recording of me playing the arrangement. Now obviously this is a big orchestration so I can only do so much on the piano. Piano is not nearly as powerful as a four orchestra. So I just want to try to get some ideas across. And this is admittedly very, very rough. And this is sort of what that take sounds like. Let me get to the point where you can hear it. Um, I think this will do it here. All right, here we go. How many bars you want, but sort of the chart will start at bar. Um, just some notes five. for Ben. <laughs> So that's the rough idea. Then I'm going to go into Holy, 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 the first verse. And this is going to be piano only. And so I am going to record this. Even though there's no orchestration with it, I'm going to record it. And you'll see why here in just a second. This is, again, a rough take. So that's all there is to it. Now you might say, why do you do this? Well, the reason I do this is because I'm trying to get across to Ben something that's very, very important to me, and that is the little tempo things that I do. It's a big part of my music, the rubato, um, that I nat naturally put into my music. And so I record a rough so that Ben knows how I feel the song. And he has to sync his orchestration to the way I'm feeling to the little tempo changes. Everything has to line up. So the way Ben does this is he takes my rough and then he builds a click track. Now a click track is basically a metronome but it's a metronome that's customized for this particular uh, arrangement. Here's what it sounds like. This is the click track that he came from, up with and he did this based on syncing the beats to what I played in the rough. Just like a metronome, right? And that's one and two and three and four and each uh, eighth note you're hearing a click. The first click you hear a stronger click and so the first beat you hear a stronger click and so on. But the other thing you probably notice there is that's not even close to very steady in terms of uh, tempo, is it? There's, there's all kinds of variants. For example, let me just play a little more. You hear how slow, the, slow it gets there for a second and then speeds up. Sort of like it's drunk, I guess. And that, again, is a big part of my music, but I want it to be that way. And, and of course, Ben didn't come up with that 
you know, out of the blue, he came up with it by listening to what I sent him. Here is the click track along with my rough. Listen carefully. <laughs> So you see what he did? He matched it up exactly. And that is obviously going to be very, very important. Because now he's going to use that click track and he can exactly sync the orchestration to what I want to do from a Roboto standpoint. So he is going to go into Cubase, he's going to take that click track and he is going to use that to build each beat of his um, arrangement and then he knows exactly how to, long to hold every note and so on and all the um, the instruments he's he's adding and it sounds like this I'll play it a little without the click and then I'll add the click let's see so here it is with the click Okay, so that is the second step. Well, the third step, whatever step we're on, uh, that's the next step anyway. And so he builds his orchestration and he and I go back and forth on what we're gonna do from in terms of orchestration. And then eventually we have the orchestration close enough where I can start working on adding my piano part to it. And so I get a final track from him, which this is. And I wouldn't say it's final because it's not mixed yet. Um, but it's something that I know the tempo and most elements are going to stay the same so I can start practicing to it. Now I could just stick with the tempo track or the, the click track, um, but I have to have something because if I don't, I'll never line everything up. For example, there's no orchestration at all under the first half of the first verse. So I'm playing by myself. No orchestration. Now if I was trying to time that 30 seconds, and had the same tempo every time, there's no way. It depends on all kinds of different uh, factors. What I ate for breakfast, how I feel that day, as to whether I would be early or late to the party when the orchestration comes back in here, which is... So I have to have the click track in order to stay with it. And, and in concerts, I do this too. I always have a click track in my ear, so when I'm playing the piano by myself for a long period of time, I am staying with a grounded click and tempo so that when the orchestra comes back, I'm with it. Okay, so that's the secret. Um, some people think that's magic. It's not magic. It just is <laughs> following a click track. However, a click track's not enough for me because I'm slow. And so what I like to do instead is I will go with the vocal count. So I took his click track and recorded a vocal count that sounds like this. <laughs> Wrong track. Here we go. And one and two and three and four 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 and e one and two. So you hear what I did right here, by the way. You see that big gap between four and and one. So there's a big retard there. And so I threw a and E just to sort of fill the space to help me time that better. And so now I have a full um, click track and I also have a vocal count and I'm ready to start practicing. And so let me play just a little bit of it for you. This will give you a hint. I'm not going to play very far into this, but you'll get a hint of what we're doing. Um, let's see, I'll back up. There's a choir prelude thingy that I throw on here um, that I won't necessarily play right now, but listen to me play. I'm playing the real piano now with, um, with the track. And three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one.
right, so there you have it, and this is, again, at the beginning before things get big, but it sort of demonstrates what I do here and why I need the click so bad. And you heard me pretty much following it, but not necessarily. Um, there's still, uh, it's early in this process, and I'm not really locked in with the track yet. Uh, for example, where is it? Coming in, some of these sections are a little rough. Right there, I'm gonna actually put a little a looping mechanism here in, in, um, in Logic Pro. You can see, if you look right here, you see again, we have four and, and then there's a big gap between and and one. And getting that timed right is sort of hard. So one of the things I can do here is I can actually loop a little section and practice it over and over again. This is a little cool thing in Logic Pro. Probably never designed for this, but I use and it. And one, this. and two, and three, and four, and E, one, and Hear how it's way and off, three, but I get another and shot. Four, and one, and two, and three, and four, And so there you have it. So I go through and loop through the song doing that. That's how I practice. Um, it's uh, obviously a more efficient way to practice than just playing the whole song over and over again. And you guys all know that. The smaller the section, the more boring it is, but you'll learn a lot faster. Well, anyway, that's the, um, the, the thing that I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little bit of behind the scenes of the process. And I will see you soon.